Alright guys, this is Black Dragon, and we are going into the next game of the Team Story Cup. Uh, we did have Root up quite a bit, up 4-0. Finally, Sage taken out by uh, Teja, of all people, of course. Uh, now Teja trying to bring his team back in the map. Up against his opponent as well, who's going to be another Terran. Root's Massa. Massa. However you want to say it. And uh, Terran vs. Terran has uh, changed quite a bit, actually, between Wings of Liberty and the expansion. Um, you're seeing a lot more now. The uh, Terran is being forced into a very uh, conservative position when, uh, when building their units because of the Widow Mines and Reapers and all the possibilities Terran has now. So you almost see a guaranteed gas opener from all Terran players. It's so difficult to stop uh, any kind of early aggression with just pure Marines. All right, both players uh, playing somewhat normal. In the identical builds, we still don't actually have a... Uh, we don't have... Oh, you greedy bastard. He is going for the command center first in a TVT. Wow, what are you thinking, Tasia? One to scout, one to drop. There's that command center first. We do have the early gas out. This timing is going to be really close. I've never seen a command center first in a Terran versus Terran work against someone going Reapers. And you have to think, you have to almost know he's going to go Reapers with that early gas. Initial Marine, SCV out to scout. Asia will be picking up on the uh, early gas. Because he did send his SCV out quite a way, or quite Wait, a time before. Alright, first Marine out to Dine Scouting as well. Uh, second uh, follow-up production is going to be another Marine as well. So he's actually going to be going for the uh, one 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 opener, uh, which is uh, fairly standard, very as safe as you can be. Uh, opting for the early Marines to stop uh, any type of early push. Uh, I'm going to probably start a uh, high ground... Command center up here, and then move into factory production once the 100 gas builds back up again down over here, though. Um, it's almost the polar opposite build, and it's, ah, it's, a, it's a damn shame because... Having to build all these other buildings and spend this gas before we can even start... Orbital over here and down. You already have the orbital done, essentially. Two, three barracks up now. Um, reactor finally coming out of that. Got to think that's part of uh, for the for the factory though. So it's, in terms of production, um, Asia just gonna kind of skate away on this one. Must have been watching some replays or something of Masa just to know kind of his tendencies. This is a very. Uh, this is not a large map and it's you know one spawn so really really ballsy to kind of go that command center first um, I do like the way he followed it up though uh, very delayed gas opting for the earlier barracks and what that's going to do is give him uh, give him army to match any type of uh, alien drop widow mines anything that could possibly come you want the barracks before the gas and before the tech uh, because you need you need that early presence of marines even more so now with the aggressive possibilities of Terran, it almost becomes like going a command center first uh, against Zerg. Because against Zerg, you, you see almost sometimes four, four barracks with constant marine production and then a transition into some type of tech. But that first 15, 16 marines are just produced just to kind of uh, put pressure, like to punish, um, to, punish the, to punish the player trying to match your economy. Because if they see that, they're going to be, oh crap, and try to throw down more expansions and cut corners. And that's where you can just punish them. Um, that's how the command center first can come out on top. You'll have just a ton of marines by throwing the early breaks down. Then you follow up with the gas. And the way the timing works out, as you see, uh, as the gas starts to build up, then you can start throwing down add-ons here and there and throwing on the factory, throwing on the engineering bay as he sees fit. But you're getting the tech pacing almost even, even with Masa. But uh, he still has the uh, the, the army advantage as well, and that, that's the advantage of going command center first. Um, and that's why it's really hard to pull off as well. You see a lot of players trying to emulate this, and we'll just fail. 
as they don't take advantage of the, uh, the resource. I'm using Tage to spend it very, very, very well. Slowly implementing the gases, waiting till he has the right amount of saturation, going into uh, tech structures as he sees fit, but still keeping up the constant marine production. He can do, because he did do the early expansion, going on a bunker as well to stop any kind of uh, charge up the front. But the one weakness of this build that you will see is any type of early uh, siege tank push, and you do see the siege tank production beginning for Masa as well. Um, not not sure what he's going into. I have to think he's going to uh, leverage himself into a defensive position. He knows now that it was command center first, so you see him starting a third command center almost instantaneously. Uh, I, I like the move. He, he's got to... Uh, oh, nice widow mine coming down. He, he does have to uh, retain some kind of lead. Uh, problem, problem with that, though, is uh, Tasia is going to have a wicked timing once the stem finishes, and if he's uh, you know, going to do a reactor... Alien, Marauder, anything's really possible because he went this early command center. He just has the mineral flexibility to really just do whatever he wants. Um, you could even throw on a scan and just kind of counter um, whatever his opponent's doing. You know, seeing this, you could just go into Marauder, Marine, Medevac, drop right on top of that, and he has little to nothing, which is so odd because he started with all these unit producing structures and, you know, isn't really doing anything with it can't do anything with it. He's, he's mineral locked from all these early buildings he had to throw down. Now trying to match his opponent, having to build an additional uh, command center. And what I'm curious about is when Tej is going to decide to be aggressive, because he knows he's got a window right here. Um, not sure if he's going to wait for some mess. He's waiting for the medevacs to come out, and will probably just jump either for an expansion or can just continue... Test out his opponent, see what he's doing. You got to think though, with as big a lead as he has right now, um, he's got to punish him for it. If he has any inclination that uh, that Masa did build, did indeed build a third, uh, he's probably just going to go like hit the green button and just go super aggressive. Yeah, going to scout over here for a third, and seeing no third, he knows it's a two base, and he's got to probably going to play passive. All right, Teja moving out. Just have uh, plus one. No, just has combat shield out at the moment. Stem seconds away from finishing. Um, as far as upgrades, I don't believe it has any. He has plus one armor in production. And he's finally getting the uh, second engineering bay and doing the armory as well. So we'll have a nice, uh, <clears throat> nice timing for a 2-2. And usually, yeah. Single engineering bay, you're going for early timing like this. That was the other indicator that he wanted to put on some early pressure and not jump into a third base and continue macroing. And here it comes. Uh, this army is so spread out. We can straight up trade here. Um, probably going to just pull away, though. Cut his losses. Did lots of damage. Um, is still up. 10, 10 SCVs. Really, really good spot for Teja to be in. Uh, finally got his third base down. He's landed on the low ground. Uh, boss is still yet to land his third. And this is the problem with people testing out these new builds with Terran. Is you'll just get completely uh, taken advantage of by just some wing celebrity timing, some old school, you know, solid fundamentals. Just I'm going to out, you know, I'm going to out mine you, and then punish you all mid game because you gave me the early lead uncontested. And because he's playing safe, he's now playing too safe and got taken advantage of. So you, you got to think, um, I, I think the answer is those are the early Reaper plays. Got to somehow get in the mix, because I think he had a timing there. <clears throat> those two Marines early really didn't do anything. They, did, they just kind of stood there. Whereas if those were Reapers, or a Reaper, at least one, he'd get, he'd get earlier scouting information, could be way, way more greedy or aggressive in the early game, and could potentially do some pretty good damage, because those Marines were still very delayed. Uh, unfortunately, just kind of expected some kind of uh, early pressure, didn't get it, and now finds himself in a uh, in a defensive position. Um, and you know, there's a thing with redundancy as well. You're seeing Masa go into siege tanks, which you liked, but he didn't land the third. He's sitting back, but he knows he's behind in the economy, so he's making himself immobile by sinking gas into the siege tanks. 
I, I get it. I get that Teja does have the lead and will have an, uh, a better mid-game army, but <clears throat> I think the important thing is to recognize to recognize the deficit and counter that with uh, mobility or drops of his own. Because uh, just right now, uh, he's so supply-locked and mineral and gas-locked into these tanks, and, and they can't really do anything for him right now. Because he's dropping just that one quick drop. <clears throat> to do some damage, and you know, right here, uh, even if he loses this entire army, it's gonna now is now just uh, barely even. Now Teja still with a lead. You know, third finally being mined from. Uh, going to income, Teja, you know, hold production at 60 perfectly, and you see a higher income, and most of this is from pulled uh, <clears throat> energy. On the command center. Alright, Tejas, you're definitely in a position to uh, stim forward as well. Has the upgrade advantage too? <clears throat> More tanks coming out. It's a perfect concave as well. Uh, Siege tanks doing damage, but there's too many Marines. Uh, they're not getting what they need to get. And here comes the drop on top of them. Going to drop into more Marines though. Emergency thrusters being traded back and forth. Tejas does have the siege tanks of his own in a really good position. As a result, takes out the entire army. But Masu doing a drop of his own. Counter pushing. Asia able to salvage a siege tank. One. Look at that follow up macro though. Very nice army coming in. And you gotta think it's only gonna get better from here. Plus three halfway completed. Plus one or plus two <laughs> vehicles. Plus two armor. Three on the way. <clears throat> and uh, Masu just now finishing. You too. You know, early game, you saw the, or mid game, you saw the advantage Teja had, and now, it almost snowballs, because now he has the gas advantage. Now you're going to see him do all kinds of weird tech drops. He's going to have an excess amount for Vikings. He can really dictate the pace of this game. Both third bases have been established, so uh, you can't see too aggressive. Um, pushes out of either player, but uh, the options available to Teja for aggression are just are so much more because of his gas lead. And his tech lead as well. We do see uh, Marines moving out, getting some good position. I uh, don't think Teja has any vision of this now, has no idea where the army is, but it is moving up very, very, very precariously. Five siege tanks in the mix. Oh, let's get the scans off back and forth. Uh, there are more siege tanks, though, for Teja. <clears throat> so we can do this leapfrogging a lot more effectively because uh, he can charge uh, He can charge Masu's army on siege and still have the same amount of tanks, whereas uh, Masu down on tanks can't do that. Has to make sure all of his tanks are sieged up at the same time. So right here, loose tank, pull back, and uh, the result is nothing because he has his defensive tanks already set up. You know, why is uh, offensive scans going down? Both players trying to get good position. You don't want to fly in a medevac over a pack full of marines. That'll lose you the game. And look at the minerals right now. Just skyrocketing for Teja as he got his fourth base now up and running, turning to another planetary fortress. The marines dueling in the middle of the map for no reason. They're going to come across these two guys, though. Get taken out. All right, tank war is incoming. What's going to happen? I don't know. More tanks for Teja, but now more Marines for Asu. Oh, micro mistake. We have a small pack of Marines in, though, able to get some nice vision, but it doesn't matter because the medevacs over here are giving great vision. And why is he going to pull back? Excellent, excellent, excellent trade. I'm Asu. All right, 3-3, three, three, almost finished. God, I think he's going to want to hit some kind of timing with that. Right, checking his possible fourth timing. Um, does have his fourth already up and running. All right, sees nothing. Scans all over the map. The tank wars are officially underway. But we do have a nice little drop coming in over here at the third. Tasia wisely punishing his opponent for the lack of tech, lack of gas. The thing is, he can't match Tasia in tanks and have Vikings also on the map and have... 
you know, possible drops incoming. So Tej is really, you know, punishing, punishing his opponent for the position they're in. And yeah, that's the advantage. He can fly Medivacs around all day, come, drop, pull back, drop more, siege up. He's nearly a 50 supply lead right now as well, but you can't charge in the siege tanks though, so it's going to still be somewhat of a stalemate. Alright, tank wars underway. 11 siege tanks. 15 total. Atasia. As a fifth base is being landed, third taken out. There goes the majority of the minerals because with Terran, <clears throat> those bases get mined out ever so fast. So as you see, I'm really mining off of one base now that just got up. Not even a planetary yet. Oh, just finished. Maybe in the nick of time. We do have a uh, huge engagement coming up from the top, but uh, unable to really put as much damage as you need to. Teja already remaxed out. All right, Teja even getting all those upgrades plus three weapons. He's got the uh, Terran building armor. Planetary is going down plus three vehicle. Everything. Yeah, Teja at this point, pulling back. Regrouping, no point in being overextended. He already took out a base, that's huge. Gonna move into this death position. <clears throat> Stems in, gonna run into a huge army. Let's take out a sensor tower. It's gonna help a lot with the drops. Gotta wonder when we're gonna see that sky transition. Saw it so much in Wings of Liberty. At a certain point, you can just muscle your way into the army with Vikings because they give more vision. Six base now landed. You gotta think he's taking these at this point just to uh, have a presence on the map so they can't be taken by the Terran player. And you're seeing the minerals just get really low. At this point, uh, Teja can almost start doing these really careless trades. He's up to 3k floating minerals right now. He has the infrastructure. He's got six barracks, two factories. He could really just uh, get move into just really, really strong production. Yeah, dropping tanks everywhere. He can just put so much pressure on Masu, and he can't do anything to, to retaliate, really. He doesn't have the Vikings. Uh, <clears throat> Marines are everywhere. There are tanks, so he can't drop on top of them. So one mining base can't do anything actually a uh, mineral star which you never see from a Terran player I don't think they have enough minerals to even repair it oh no there goes the third down to a new mining bases there is nothing left and there's the good game starved out by Tasia that's two very solid games in a row from Tasia will he be able to